Discussion keeps the world turning. This is Roundtable. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Roundtable. Coming to you live from Beijing. I'm He Young. Good to have you for this ride on today's show. Have you noticed how live concerts continue to be the hottest ticket in town this year? Whether it's fresh faces or veteran stars, the live performance market in China is on fire. Fans are traveling across cities to catch these shows. What's fueling the surge in concert popularity, and how is it reshaping our culture? And tourism landscape, and from unforgettable experiences to mesmerizing tunes, we're sharing the happiness that lit up our week. Essentially, what's made us happy in Roundtable's Happy Place. For today's program, I'm joined by Yu Shun and Steve Hatherly in the studio. First on today's show. Have you ever been caught in the whirlwind of trying to snag tickets for your favorite artist's concert tour, only to find out that? The tickets have been sold out instantly. The concert and performance market in China is booming. Traveling to a city for a performance is the new must-do in cultural tourism, according to the China Association of Performing Arts. In the first half of 2024 alone, there were over 251,000 commercial. Performances nationwide, and a 30 percent increase from last year. While I thought the market was super hot last year already, and now it's just adding oil to that fire. Musical fire, I suppose so. <laughs> so、uh, let's go to Yushun first. Give us an overview of China's concert and live performance market right now. Absolutely. So we can see from the stats. The market is still growing,、uh, according to data from the China Association of Performing Arts. Box office revenue reached 19 billion yuan. That's about 2.6 billion U.S. dollars. A year-on-year increase of 13 percent, with an audience of 79 million, which is 27 percent increase、uh, compared to last year. And among these, the large-scale performance, which means the performances with more than 2,000 audience,、mm. uh, market uh, this market showed a continuous upward trend in the first half of. 2024, with concert and music festival box office revenue increasing by 134 percent year on year, and audience numbers increasing by 63、uh, percent year on year. The math seems to add up, right?、Mm-hmm. Because there are more concerts now. 251,000 commercial performances nationwide. It feels like a concert every five minutes or something like that. <laughs> yeah,、uh, the concerts are getting bigger as well. You talked about the fact that the large scale performances were growing. So yeah, again, this math seems to add up. More concerts, more people, bigger audiences, larger ticket revenue at the box office.、Mm. Yes, and Steve, have you seen this sort of internationally, or do you see this in your friend circles, or are people chatting about this?、Um, going to concerts, seeing live performances we all, these days. We all know Taylor Swift. Right? Oh yes,、mm-hmm. yeah. The Taylor Swift effect on the economy.、Yeah. There was a story earlier this year from the United States、uh, that talked about coming out of COVID in America, people were spending. Vacation money、mm. on a Taylor Swift concert. Now that、mm. doesn't mean that the tickets were more expensive than any other location around the world. But what that means is, airplane tickets, hotels, food, merchandise—all the money that they would have spent, these families or these individuals would have spent on their vacations, they were using it to go to a Taylor Swift concert and experience it to its fullest. Right,、mm. and with Tay Tay,、um, she's a global, probably the biggest global pop star at the moment. She's got this power to attract people to different countries,、mm-hmm. and、uh, so that for, for them is like traveling to a country just to see her performance and do other stuff along the way. Yep, you're absolutely right, and then there's the trickle down effect too, right? When you're traveling to a city where there's a performance, getting a hotel room can be more difficult,、mm-hmm. and if you are lucky enough to get Get one. You're probably going to pay more for it than you、mm. would、uh, during a non-concert time, having to stay outside the city. Oh, there's lots of different effects. Yeah,、there. and I heard that even there are some just rumors of a one specific, basically. Band or celebrity is going to that city to hold a con- concert, and then the hotel price will 
rise mm-hmm. at the moment. So I think that is also the reason why uh, domestically it's the same. So many concert and fo- performances have driven the economy of other industries like tourism or hotel or even you know the consumption of the whole city. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and also we're seeing not just concerts, but also all kinds of、mm. live performances are contributing to this booming、uh, overall performance market here in China. And tell us some of the things that stand out. Like there are theaters, there are、mm. other things, and、uh, yeah. So take it away, you should. Yes. So.、Um, uh- Aside from concerts, or not only concerts, all of these the small theaters and new performance spaces, such as the performance venues for dramas and plays,、mm. especially these,、um, you know, the one that a lot of people will buy tickets to, also showed a booming development trend overall with one hundred eighty six nine thousand. I mean. 186,900 performances、uh, in 2023, which is an increase of 471 percent.、Mm. Um, you know, increase compared to 2019.、Mm. Mm. And the box office revenue was 4.8 billion yuan. That's a, a, approximately 662 million U.S. dollars,、mm. which is also a huge increase compared to 2019. This is really good news. I mean, that number 419 percent, or what was it, 470 percent compared、yes. to 2019. That sounds like a shocking number, I guess, when we think what happened from 2019, 2020, 2021.、Mm. That number isn't so surprising. What's great, I think, if we dig into this a little bit and look under the covers, the great thing is that it's not just big name performers here in、mm. China who are drawing crowds. It's smaller artists,、mm. meaning not as popular, perhaps, or theaters or venues that aren't the big ones. And what this will do, I think, is. Create a strong base for an artistic community that will continue to grow and support those artists, these young people who want to get involved with theater or music as as their career. These numbers are evidence that they can be successful in that, and it's great too. There's a obviously a really really strong art market、uh, here in China. Yes, and I think this、um, art market is enjoying. Definitely a green shoots, new growth、mm. in that sense. Because、mm. prior COVID, I don't remember seeing so many news reports about small theaters, which is a really niche thing, of being able to draw in big crowds or you know being able to fill like the front row seats can be already difficult. Yeah, it can be challenging. Yeah, it, sure, it really can be. So it seems like you know there's definitely good news in this、uh, industry. Um, and also, we see that music festival. This is something that every year it seems in the last couple of years,、mm. especially during summertime and maybe since springtime, it becomes a talking point. And going to music festivals has become sort of like a badge of honor、mm. that young people wear in this country. It's like, okay, you go to music concerts, a pop concert. That's one thing. You go to like the theater、uh, to, to watch a play. That's another kind of. Group, and if you go to music festivals, then yeah, you're really letting it out, and you're one of those like really, you're part of the really、it's、hip a, group. It's a totally different experience, isn't it? Going to a concert versus going to a music festival, which、mm. kind of sounds counterintuitive because you're hearing music at both venues, both both concerts. So what's the difference? I remember when I saw Maroon Five. You know、mm-hmm. Maroon Five,、yeah. Adam Levine, right? And、May、this I ask, is, ask how when was this? Oh, this would have been maybe a few years ago、okay. in, in Seoul. Okay.、Um, and I remember thinking this at the end of the concert. Now, this is not saying anything bad about Maroon Five. They make <laughs> really catchy, wonderful pop songs. But I remember thinking at the end of the concert. That was a little bit too much Maroon Five music. Do you know what I mean?、Aww. It was like Maroon Five song after Maroon Five song after. So that's a concert. I think that's only because you're not that into Maroon Five, or you just、Wrong. can't get enough of it. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Adam Levine was on stage doing all his Adam Levine things, like taking his shirt off and <laughs> whatever. The crowd was going crazy. But m- my point is, when you go to a festival,、mm. it's such, in my opinion, such a better experience because you、uh-huh. get varied musical styles. 
styles from different artists, different singing voices. You get the freedom to walk around from stage A to stage B, bigger names, smaller names. It's just such a such a better experience. Not to say going to a concert mm-hmm. is something to be avoided. I'm just saying I think festivals are the place to be. Oh, I will pick concert. I really? I'm that kind of concert person because I can only dance with all of these mugs that I know or I like. So if it is a music festival that I with a lot of singers or artists that I don't know or the music genre that I don't like I'm probably not into it yeah but isn't it a great time to get to know new artists and expand your musical mm. boundaries or library so to Fair speak enough. Yeah. yeah yeah it's interesting because here in China I think even with the uh, music festival culture and arrangement it's still evolving and with the music festivals in China although they're pretty big for our own uh, track record but if you compare them internationally um it's still kind of in its nascent development stage because you don't really see well i'll offer a comparison recently went to fuji rock and that festival is one of the biggest in eastern asia this part of the world and then there's a multiple there are like six or in some years nine stages that are perform uh, offering performances at the same time mm. but here in china um i haven't checked the most recent music festivals here but to my memory usually there's only one main stage and main acts happen there so i think for um a lot of uh music festival goers you know it uh, we're still getting used to what it might be like if there are so many wild choices out there at the same time for you to taste. Yeah, talking about diversity in music at, yeah. a, at a festival, right? Is yeah. that why, Yushin, the, the performance market is doing so well here yeah. is because of the diversity in Chinese music? I think so. You know, creativity and all of this diversity is absolutely one of the main points of more and more people are joining or enjoying these kind of you know performances you know there are examples in china the diversity of music genres available from classical and folk to pop rock and electronic music nice. caters to mm-hmm. diverse are we, are we, tastes are we edm fans in here <laughs> I- kind of you know because that that kind of genre is really exciting and you can always you know grab a drink and dance and swing with it yeah absolutely yeah Yeah. it depends on the mood as well and the best part about a music festival when it's offering electric takes it's when if you feel like you know going a little bit mainstream there's you know the main stage and if you're feeling alternative well there's that on offer too Mm -hmm. and also aside from these kind of concerts or music festival offerings um we're seeing and I remember talking about this on our show, mm. uh, the rise of dance dramas, mm. of immersive dramas, and all kinds of performances. And what do you think is driving this boom? I think um, more and more people are into these kind of immersive experience and or I would say the form of these performances are attracting more people because um, the way that, pe- that that they are presenting these kind of, you know, no matter it's Chinese culture or these kind of um, cultural heritage, it is offering a new way for people to get into that environment. And you can actually experience, no matter, no matter with all of these 360 dome theaters or 4D and 5D movie projects. Yeah, wow. You, you can always get into it and you can be part of the story. And I think that is one of the reasons that a lot of people like it. And one thing I would like to mention is that the dance drama, um, Poetic Dance, the journey of a legendary landscape painting, or in Chinese, Zhizi Qinglu, which got really famous or came into public eye due to the Spring Festival Gala. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is like, it was touring like across the country and even overseas. And I think that is absolutely showing the popularity of these dramas, and more and more people are accepting it. Even me, I, I am also one of the audience would that be something that you would typically be interested in or because of the innovative strategies of these performers or performances it's drawing you in because it's something new and fresh Mm, i think both you know of course first of all the technology is one part and another one is the essence or the story of these dramas are attracting more people especially with all of these uh, Chinese traditional culture thing. Mm. So yeah, I think 
that is very important. In, in Canada, on the East Coast, where I'm from, Nova Scotia, our music is very Irish. It's no. very kind of stomp your feet and clap your hands and go ah. do the rhythm and the fiddle music and things yeah. like that. We in Canada don't have the long history, obviously, that you have here in China. Therefore, the performers don't have that kind of um, cultural bank to draw upon, if you will, those stories to tell. Uh, but we do have our own our own culture uh, in terms of music, and it's kind of the same thing. When people go out to a concert in Nova Scotia, mm. it's something that they're kind of looking for. You know, having a Taylor Swift concert, for example, in, in Canada would be super exciting, mm. but also to have our own traditional music and our own performances is something that people really want to see too, and it sounds like here in China that's the case mm. as well. Yeah, and currently, or at least in recent years, we've seen that there have been more investment as well as attention devoted to um, adding new um, offerings on the menu. Um, the dance drama that you shouldn't just mentioned, it's quickly become almost like in its a league of its own in mm. terms of dramas mm. because it's so good and it's established its name. Uh, nationwide. So I don't think the production company is worried at all in selling tickets. But also, you know, for other dance dramas, then it might be some of them are still kind of struggling to make mm. a name for themselves and to attract people to come in to see them. Because, yeah, people have varied tastes, but to really go to a venue and obviously you need to pay for it and to sit down for two hours. I mean, it's commitment for people, yeah, isn't it? It is. And, and I think maybe we forget sometimes when we think about business competition, mm -hmm. these production companies are in competition with each other too, right? Uh, people only have so much money to spend when it comes to go going to see live performances. So they have to pick and choose. And I guess the good thing is, if it's a competitive market, then the production companies, the performances, the performers, they'll be forced to up their game. And for a consumer, that's good news because you're going to get a better quality performance, a better quality product in the end. Yes. And, well, it's good to see if there's more competition within their own genre. If not, then different genres as mm -hmm. well, just mm -hmm. so that, you know, they're all competing for your eyeball time that's part of the marketing and to get you into the venue and to enjoy the performances. And another thing, I suppose, why... Um, these days going to live performances have become a thing is that maybe after our experiences in the last few years, we kind of realize this maybe or have this new found appreciation of a live performance mm. of being seated next to people mm. when you get the oohs and ahs in mm. the room with other people. And to some extent, I would say that um, for live concerts, it's kind of like modern religion. People come together, sing along, and you feel if it's a good performance that we are on the same width length as the performer on stage. Yeah. And you're kind of enjoying this moment that you're fully connected with like thousands of, well, no, tens of thousands of people. Mm. And that energy is never something you can get from your own living room. 100% agree with that. Yeah, going to a concert, going to a festival, going to the ballet, going to the opera. You can't replicate that process on your television screen. You can enjoy it, but you're just not going to get the same experience. Mm. And also, I think, um, you know, the boom of these uh, performances and concerts, also because of some multi-party support, you know, from the operator side, they, they, they can see a lot of um, audience and basically they can sell out all of these concerts, tickets. And also when audience are, they got entertained, they will maybe go to different, um, you know, times of concerts. And yeah. then with yeah, the right. city, mm -hmm. as we mentioned, um, some of them will release some kind of supportive policies mm. on supporting the concert to be held. So yeah. basically we have different parties 
that are also supporting the whole industry. You, a, a lot of sorry, mm. but a lot of this is driven by the local governments. Mm. I suspect there might be this mysterious name book, a roller deck. Nobody has that kind of thing, but you know, you, you get what I mean. <laughs> mm. And then basically, they're looking at huh major names in let's say pop music or in classical music or、uh, whatever given genre, and then. See if we can get A B C D into our city,、mm-hmm. like over a time span of three months or something, and build that momentum and establish yourself as now. You know, maybe this is the city where pop concert, the pop concert、mm-hmm. capital, or whatever it is, and like then, a culture hub. Yes, that yes, kind of thing, because、yeah. that's really important for the local economy. And Absolutely, we've talked about how to draw people in, and they're not just here to see the concert. These performances that you've mentioned. And probably many more、uh, popular here in China. The Chinese performances, I mean, gaining some traction overseas as well, or is this、mm. strictly domestic su-、uh, success? Of course, they are also exposed to international audiences. Also,、um, a lot of、um, you know foreign shows are getting in China. So in recent years, not only have more international performances come to China, as we said, exposing. Chinese audiences to a broader range of music and performances. Also, more Chinese performances has also have also been exported overseas. We can see in the first half of this year, several new domestic productions ventured abroad and received positive reviews in overseas markets. You know,、um, one example is the ten-year-old private music、um, ensemble. Zi De Qing Shu. They they went abroad for the first time to Malaysia, attracting over two thousand audiences. And also, they performed in local high schools to teach students how to play traditional Chinese instruments such as drum, gu qing, gu zheng, pi pa, and flute,、um, and everything. So, these is, are also these are I think examples of you know both domestic and、um, international shows. Are getting in and getting out of China, and、um, people are loving it. It's wonderful because it's sharing culture, it's sharing art. I remember not so long ago, I interviewed one of the members and one of the producers、uh, from the Buena Vista Social Club.、I'm、not sure if you've heard of them or not. They were. Uh, what they did was they made an album in the mid 1990s. They're Cuban musicians.、Mm-hmm. Now the world had never been exposed to Cuban music before, so they wanted to go into Cuba and make this musical project. They brought together the very best、uh, musicians that Cuba had to offer. These musicians had been playing for years and decades,、mm-hmm. making this beautiful, wonderful music. They made an album. They released it to the world. I think it was ninety six or nineteen ninety seven, and the world absolutely fell in love with this album. They、mm. fell in love with the group. They were touring the world. Opportunities to share their music that they never would have had before.、Yeah. Sharing art, sharing music, sharing culture is the way to bring people closer together. So this is really wonderful news that these Chinese performances are finding other markets now and and finding success there too. Yes, and music truly is the universal language.、Mm. Um, a, a lot of the music that、um, the examples that you shouldn't just mention. Some of them don't even have lyrics, and it's just、mm. uh, this is a, a new music. Music genre in China that is getting increasingly popular in recent years. That's the appreciation of ancient Chinese musical instruments and、um, and sometimes ancient Chinese musical instrument band.、Mm-hmm. And it's a it's a finding new flavor in something of an old wine and. Young people love it, so to see this going international, I think having more people, maybe without the similar kind of cultural background, to appreciate it, I think is something really, really beautiful. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Yes, and guys, we've said some of the,、um, you know, the, the bright side of this、uh, this industry as we talked about it.、Um, what do you think are maybe possible things that you'd like to see some improvement so that Um, we can enjoy 
better offerings out there. More mm. access. <laughs> Short and sweet answer. More access. Like I said, more art, more music, more culture available to all of us all around the world so that we can know that it's existing out there and find out new musics and new arts that we love. Mm. And I think the most common issue that I saw recently is the ticketing issue and a ref refund. But we can see more and more you know, platforms are giving out more clear and... Um, I mean, clear policies. Making it easier. Yes. Yeah, making it easier. And also, we've been through this craze for a couple of years now, and I see that um, the different actors involved in this industry, they're getting better. And also, the good ones, they survive. The not-so-appealing ones, well... They don't always get a second chance. And coming up during the second half of the show, do you feel the pressure of getting in shape in summertime? Some of us do. Stay tuned for more discussion.